Good day, everyone. Uh, this is uh, John Weber with Software Toolbox. I'm sitting in for Bob Lowe, CSI Executive Director, as Bob's out at the uh, ISA show this week, uh, promoting the CSI uh, mission and message. Thank you for attending the September CSI webinar. Today's webinar will provide you with a tour of the CSI public and private websites. Understanding them enables you to use them to their fullest. As a reminder, use the Q&A panel for questions. A host and sponsor of our monthly webinars is Software Toolbox, a CSIA partner member. Software Toolbox helps system integrators lower their risk on projects that involve software by providing them a unique mix of off-the-shelf software products and rapid response technical support that minimizes the need for custom code and lowers field startup time risk. I'd like to introduce Ann Nelson, who is today's webinar presenter. Ann is the communications officer or manager for the CSIA. And uh, Ann, if you want to add anything else to your bio here, you can do so, because without further delay, the floor is yours. Thank you, Ann. Well, thank you very much, John, and welcome, everyone. Um, I would say good morning to those of you in North America, and good afternoon and good evening to those in in Europe and Asia. And I'm very excited to um, share some new developments at CSIA with you. Uh, joining me today is going to be Jeannie Rosen from our staff, and then in progress, uh, Paul Waking will be joining us from Higher Logic. They're both going to be my assistants on the the tour guide today to. Um, answer questions as they come in because we want, of course, keep this moving and make the most of our, our time together. Um, Jeannie is the graphic designer at, uh, for CSIA and she's responsible for the striking new look of our new CSIA websites. And Paul represents, as I said earlier, Higher Logic, which is the software as a service provider that hosts our connected community. So there really will be today two parts to this tour. And the first part is going to be uh, the new and improved public website. The second part is going to be the more familiar connected community that many of you have um, seen uh, develop and evolve over the last couple of years. So my background uh, is in journalism, and the point, of course, is to get right to the big news first. So I wanted to start with, of course, the public website and give you a little bit of background about that new public website and how that came about. Um, about a year and a half ago, the CSIA Board of Directors decided to um, consider advancing the mission and expanding the mission of CSIA. And they contracted with the Ritterbush Group, a uh, re market research firm, to help us understand the potential market here. And the basic question of that was, uh, could our members working through CSIA pool their resources and help raise awareness of the profession in general um, and to promote its members as um, to its prospective end users? So we um, contracted with them. And of course, the ultimate goal was to, to develop a website that would reach both audiences and tell them about the profession, about the value of certification, and ultimately to connect them with our members. So our vision was to elevate the profession, to develop a website that would speak to these two audiences, and that it ultimately would connect them. And our goals then were to come up with an, this integrated platform, we wanted leaner and more focused content. We wanted it to be clean and snappy. Uh, and we wanted to have the ability to keep it current and be able to update it frequently with new content. Um, and that, of course, improves our search engine optimization. And we wanted the website to speak directly to the two audiences. Ultimately, any communication, we want to lead the visitors to some sort of action. And in this case, we wanted prospective clients to be able to find an integrator that served their needs. We wanted our prospective members to be able to find membership information, become a part of the association. And we wanted our current members to really get the full value out of their membership. And one of those being the, the website that would extend their own marketing reach. 
And this little graphic just kind of shows how when um, CSIA and its members succeed, we all succeed and, uh, and grow. And um, we, we raise the awareness of CSIA and the profession and the great things that we have to offer to our end users. So here is a screenshot of the new website, the new public website. And I think you'll find that it's cleaner and brighter and uh, certainly more attractive. And one of the things that you don't see in this PowerPoint is that it continues to uh, change all of the time. We have rotating features that are the dominant image. Uh, we have here uh, something that tells us of what the CSIA is all about. Um, and then we have two portals. And I want to start by taking you to the, the left side of the screen, which um, is the side that we call the end user side, although we've discovered in our research that end users don't necessarily identify themselves as end users. So um, that would be the, what we now call the client side. On the right is what we call the integrator side. So this is the home page that addresses both of these audiences. So first we're going to take a look at the left side, um, the, the part that was developed specifically for prospective clients of CSIA members. And on here you're going to see um, a dominating image again. It'll be a rotating image that brings news and feature articles that are of interest to your prospective clients. Um, on the right side, you'll see a column here called Featured Industries. These are the industries that we've identified as the primary ones for our members. Uh, if you go up to the, the drop-down box, you'll be able to see all of the industries. So you can search based on, on that as well, because obviously we have many, many industries. That's the challenge of this website is, is reaching across all of those different vertical markets. Um, along the bottom is some content that is essentially shared between both the integrator side and the client side, and that's basic information about the organization. What does a system integrator do? What is the, the association about? And if you're a member, what would you do to jump over to that other portal, which we'll be seeing in a few minutes? Uh, as I mentioned, the featured industries, the nine selected here, each have their own landing page. Um, and so this particular one, this will take you to some information about um, an article that appeared in Food Engineering Magazine. But if you look at, here is the landing page, for example, for water and wastewater. And so it tells you a little bit about what control system integrators do for clients in that industry. And then over here on the right is a randomized list of our certified members who've identified in Find an Integrator that they work in the water and wastewater industries. And each time you come back to that, that will change. So it won't always be applied control engineering, uh, but occasionally it'll be Martin Control Systems that will, will be there. And that was something that was very important to our certified members was um, was being able to connect directly from our website to their website. And as I mentioned earlier, you can always select up here the other industries, and that will take you to find an integrator uh, where you can search among all of our members. Here's another interior page of the website that shows, um, educates our viewers about the, uh, the organization and the value and, and sort of what's in it for them, why they would want to consider hiring a CSIA member and a certified member in particular. And then if you probably have already noticed, here's another interior page, that on each page we prominently display a link to find an integrator. And that is the key action that we wanted our, our client visitors to, to be able to take. I'm going to jump back now to the home page of the website, the new public website. And you remain, remember the red door here takes us into the integrator side. This is the side where we would speak directly to either our current members, um, but also to our prospective members. This is where more of the traditional association website information appears. 
Again, we have a rotating feature. We have some static content that, that helps people understand what Control System Integrator does. And at any given time, you should be able to figure out, because we know that people don't always enter a website through the front door. So we've tried to use some graphics and other things, uh, the button, that would at any point take you back to the place that you really should be. So let's take another look in uh, inside of the integrator side. You'll see that we have, again, some of the traditional things about the organization, membership, events. Um, we have um, certainly got more interesting visuals now. We've added some testimonials. And we hope that this appeals to control system integrators who maybe would like to get involved, maybe don't really know that much about the organization. Um, another interior page that I want to draw your attention to is the focus on our external media reach. And these are press releases and case studies and articles that have appeared in industry media um, and also have provided content for the site. And I'm going to make a plug here for the case studies because this is where we're looking for you to contribute information and case studies that we can take your content and make into either content for the website or articles that are placed in vertical markets or the articles that you often see in uh, automation world and in tech that CSIA provides. So that's my plug to you to, uh, to send us your content to help us keep it fresh. Uh, just again, going back, here's another um, shot that um, shows the, the integrator side of the public website. But I want to draw your attention here to the CSIA Connected Community. And you'll notice that um, there's a pretty um, direct connection because what you see when you get there is something that looks very similar. You know it's different, but uh, Jeannie has done a wonderful job of incorporating the graphics and the colors from the other public site into our connected community. And so what you'll see here is um, a new user interface. Uh, as I mentioned, it uses a lot of the same colors. We have some new features along the top that should make it easier. Um, Higher Logic did, um, has continued to evolve its product, as I mentioned earlier. And one of the things they've done is improve the user interface. So if you haven't been involved with the connected community, you might want to go back and take a second look. We've also reorganized the content some that we have so that we have the news on the left column. We have some things that are trending. We have the start here information, which is, um, you know, where everyone needs to, to um, probably start if you've not been involved in the community and just take some steps. We also have blogs and um, Often those are written by Bob or from leadership, or, or sometimes I feel my uh, need to, to uh, say something. I see something in the news I think might be of interest. But this is also a place where you can contribute uh, content and, uh, and be a part of the community as well. Um, so just a little background for those of you who aren't familiar with it. It's a private. Uh, networking community. It's very much like LinkedIn. Uh, it's a network of peers. It's the people you've met at the CSIA Executive Conference. Um, and it's a way of continuing the sort of the momentum, the networking, and the, the learning that goes on at the conference throughout the year. And because this is an association that only meets once a year, and because we're so dispersed, we find that this uh, was a way for us to continue those conversations throughout the year. And I also want to mention that this is where Find an Integrator resides. So we'll come back to that um, later as well. So looking at the site, um, I want to go back and, and mention to you the first steps. If you've not been involved in the connected community, you'll need to log in. Uh, one of the things uh, that, that we'll then be looking at here is how to log in, how to enhance your profile, find your colleagues, um, check out some communities, and, and then find some ways that you can connect with 
the CSIA Connected Community. If you haven't logged in before, here is the, the URL. Uh, note that there is no www before that. Uh, you're going to go up to the upper right hand corner and log in to see members content. And your login is going to be your email address. Um, and then your password, if you've never logged in before, is going to be CSIA, all uppercase, and your first and last initials, also uppercase. And so what's new here is that we have also changed this sign on to make it more um, just essentially seamless. And when you do this, you'll notice that you actually connect to a different website which hosts the CSIA database in there. Um, one of the things that first steps in any social media site is to create a profile. Um, and that is up in the top navigation. You'll just click on profile, and you're going to notice that there's some already been information pre-populated um, there for you, and that's the demographic information that you've shared. So I'm just going to pop over here to the, one of the next sites. Here is someone's uh, um, profile that is only using information out of our association management system database. So you already have a profile, whether you've completed it or not. Uh, here's one uh, from our former chairman, um, Ed Deal, where you see that he has gone in and he's used the gear. There's a little gear uh, there that is new now that allows you to add information on screen. So you don't have to go off to the other association management site anymore. You can do this right on the screen. And clearly, the more you share, the more ways people have to connect with you. So uh, in this case, Ed has gone in, he's added a bio paragraph that tells something about him. Um, he, he could probably add some other awards and um, uh, some additional things. It shows over here some of his blogs, contacts that he has. And um, there's additional information that's off the screen here that shows some of the networks. So ways that people can, can connect um, their auto-generated lists of people who have some something in common with you. It might be your city, state, member type. Um, so that is a great place to go. It's after you've created your own profile, go take a look around and see who else is on the connected community and find out uh, something about the people that maybe you've shared a table with at the executive conference. Um, next step would be to check out the community. And there are various types of communities. Some of them are based on interest. If you're a member of a committee, uh, you're, prob you're already a part of a, a community. Um, and there are a number of communities that you can join. Uh, obviously, communities that are uh, committees, boards of director, committee type communities are not uh, accessible for everyone. But there are a number of them. Uh, and each of those communities has its own landing page. And this is different from the past, too. Uh, you can see this, I chose this community because it's, well, it's one that I created about a month ago, and it has its own activity announcements, shared files. And this is a community that's specifically for the people who contribute most often to the newsletter. So you can see um, there's discussions, there's a library that people are using to upload their own articles. Uh, nobody's written a blog yet. Um, the, and the 23 members, when you click on that, you can see, oh, who else is, is contributing to the newsletter on a regular basis? So in this case, we're using the community as a place to collaborate. Um, and that um, is really the beauty of the connected community. One of the other, uh, I think the feature probably people enjoy the most is the open forum. And everyone has been automatically subscribed to the CSIA open forum. Um, and this is a place where you can go and pose questions, ask people what their, you know, their recommendations are. You can share best practices. It really is the, the town square where everyone meets. And there's really very few limits on this. We monitor it, but we don't, um, we don't approve comments before they're put up there. We leave it to the members of the community to to um, police it, I, and so 
if there are comments that come up, um, you know, I, I usually hear about them pretty quickly, um, and that's very rarely happened. And the idea, of course, is that we want people to share openly and to feel that this is their community and uh, their place to say. So as I mentioned here, um, we just ask that you keep it related to CSIA and no comments about the NFL replacement refs, <laughs> which is, of course, a big topic in Wisconsin this week. But essentially just to, to keep it related to CSIA business. One of the things that's new this time is uh, recommend a post that we have not had the ability to do that in the past. So I encourage you to um, view some of these. And um, if you see something, you can re recommend it because then when people go in to search, they can search based on most recommended or most viewed comments. Uh, it's kind of uh, very similar, obviously, to uh, a thumbs up on Facebook or, or LinkedIn. Um, and then the next step would be to post something yourself. And this is literally as easy as writing an email. Just look at the latest discussions. Um, you'll see down here at the bottom where it says post. It's going to take you to a screen that looks like this. Um, you can type in your subject, that is required. You can decide which conversation. A lot of people, like if you're uh, posting to the open forum, you'll select open forum right here. Or if it's a particular community that you're involved, you'll, you'll be able to click this drop down. And then it's, like I said, it's like writing an email and you go down to the bottom and there'll, there'll be a, a sign, a little symbol down at the bottom that will say post and, it, and there it is. Now notice here that if you're not a member of a particular community, your, these posts will not even show. So I'm seeing this and Jeannie's seeing this because we do have admin access and we're seeing that. But only the communities that you're involved in will actually show up. So your home page is going to look different from someone else's home page. Let's see. And then finally, I just suggest that you participate and um, post a question or reply to a conversation. Get involved in a community. You can share documents. You can share videos. Um, you can recommend content, which is a, a great first step. That's a, a pretty easy. Um, you can search. You can write a blog. Basically, just get on the bus and give it a try. And that's really what it takes to make a, a connected community because you are the community. So with that, I would also say that if you have questions about the connected community, we can take them now, but also our office staff, Kim and Laura and I can all help you with connected community questions, as can Jeannie or anyone on our staff. But uh, uh, Kim and Laura are here full time during the week and um, would be your, your best bet. Um, I'm not always as easy to find, but I'm happy to answer any questions that you have. Okay, Ann, um, I have unmuted the phone for the people that have phoned in. My, pretty much everyone is on audio broadcast. I don't have any questions currently in the Q&A panel or the chat panel, so which is a decent sign you've covered everything, but if there are questions, we'll take them now. Uh, here comes one. Looks like uh, anyone can post a question, but can anyone blog? Does blogging require a specific setup? No, everyone can blog. That's, uh, it's very, if you look at the blogs, you'll see, um, uh, I believe it says add or post at the bottom, and it's very similar to writing an, an open forum discussion question. You should be able to just click on that and write your blog. You'll have a choice of publishing it now, or you can save it for later. Uh, and you can also choose uh, who can respond to your blog. And generally, our, we try to leave this as wide open as possible, so the defaults are set that anyone can respond to blogs. Okay. Other questions? Okay. Well, I 
thank you, John, for hosting. Uh, sure. Software um, Toolbox has uh, certainly been. And I a see great one more question. I'm sorry to interrupt. Uh, there is one more no, question. No, it's fine. Um, okay. Vance is asking, what is the difference? When should I post and when should I blog? Can you answer that? Great question, Vance. That is a good question. Um, posting a question or posting something in the dis uh, latest discussions area usually is for a question. You want to get a conversation going. Um, it really is for um, getting and asking for information. A blog I always think of as more like a, a letter to the editor. It's more of an editorial. It's a place where you might go if you have something, an observation you want to share, an opinion. Um, it, I, I think of it truly as a letter to the editor. You don't necessarily re expect people to respond to you. Where with a posting, you would. You would be looking for something specific and you'd be looking for replies to that. Yeah. Ah, and then follow-on question, both positive uh -huh. and negative opinions? Uh, I think that, you know, in the spirit of um, the First Amendment, we do want to hear from uh, people. And I guess the, I go back to the, the slide earlier where we ask people to keep it related to CSIA business. Um, uh, I don't think this is a place where um, you know, we obviously want to, if you have negative opinions, I always feel like the best policy is to go directly to the person. So um, I, I don't know that a blog is necessarily the place where I would post something negative about another member or a partner or uh, the staff. Um, I think this is a place to, to share um, opinions that you think are of value to all of the members. Wait and see if Vance has something else to add. Huh? He says okay. thanks. All yeah. right. Yeah. Well, good. All right. Well, I'll make this the last call for questions, and then otherwise I'll switch over and take care of wrapping things up. Last call for questions, folks. All right. I'll start wrap up. If something pops up in the middle of that, we can certainly step back and address it. So let me go ahead and switch back over here and get the closing up. Okay. To all of our attendees today, thank you for your participation. My hope is you've had several takeaways that maximize your use of CSIA website. And thank you for your work to make our website so useful and beneficial. And I'll go ahead and extend that to everybody on the CSI management team and partners, you people you brought in to help make it happen. Uh, thanks again to our host and sponsor, Software Toolbox. Be sure to complete the survey for today's webinar. It will arrive in your inbox within the hour and takes only 30 seconds to complete. Your feedback is necessary for our continuous improvement. In closing, here's a CSI bullet list for you to consider. This is a Bob Lowe trademark thing. I get to deliver it today. Uh, a cost estimating survey is going to appear in the inbox of the primary contact of our integrator members soon. If you are the primary contact, be sure to complete it. On October 24th, we're going to have a webinar, call, webinar called Where's the Money? What Financial Statements Tell Us by Kathy Durham, a 2012 conference presenter. And I'm going to go off script here. I just came from the annual partners meeting of CSIA. And uh, we had a whole discussion about the KPIX program, and some of the integrators there were sharing that, you know, gee, I wish I understood a little better, you know, the, the things that cause these numbers to happen. What else in my financial statements causes my current ratio to be uh, perhaps uh, lower than uh, the, the average for CSIA? So when I saw this webinar com topic come over yesterday, Jeannie, I just had a big smile because I think a lot of uh, – our partner members will, will want to attend this one. I think it will help them get more value out of the investment in the KPEX program, or perhaps have some folks realize, gee, maybe I should participate because now I understand what these financial statements tell us. We're all engineers and, uh, and aren't, aren't exactly expert financiers, so do attend that event. 
Uh, Bob also has here to use the CSI best practices, and he wants me to remind everyone that Revision 4 was released in June and is in the CSI library in the connected community. Do participate in the CSI statistics program called KPIX. It lets you benchmark against your peers. New to our statistics program is a salary survey that is specific to the CSI industry. Both can save you lots of money. This and most CSI monthly webinars are archived at controlsys.org in the members area. And finally, if you have a suggested topic for a webinar, please include your suggestion in your survey comments. This is John Weber on behalf of Bob Lowe, CSI Executive Director. Thanks again for attending and goodbye.